Winds of Hope by Katie Duffield Parched red dust swirled on the wind as William Kemkwamba stooped between rows of chamunga, or maize, near his family's mud-brick thatched home in Malawi, Africa. As the searing sun scorched his back, the 14-year-old wrapped his hand around a withered stalk. Instead of being plump and green, the maize was dry and brittle. It had grown barely knee-high. The maize should have been up to his father's chest by that time, but the rains had not come to nourish it. The drought of 2001 dragged on and on. For many months, William's family had only enough maize for one meal each day, and then for just a small handful at night, and finally for only four mouthfuls. As they grew thinner and thinner, William feared they all would die of starvation. The following spring, William and his father knew that all they could do was begin again. They planted a new maize crop. This time, the rains came. The maize grew, ankle high, knee high, chest high. William hoped that life could now return to normal. He'd worked hard to pass the exams to enter high school. When the term began, however, William's father explained that, because of the drought, there was no money to pay his school fees. It appeared that William's education would end at eighth grade. Though he could not attend school, William still wanted to learn. He was curious about many things. He took apart radios, trying to discover how they made music. One day, turning a bicycle upside down and cranking the pedals by hand, he figured out that the dynamo that generated electricity for the headlight could be wired to power a radio instead. Some days, William visited the village library. It had only three shelves, but William found books that interested him science books about how things worked. One day, while looking for a dictionary on the bottom shelf, he found a book he hadn't seen before pushed behind the others. It was an American school textbook called Using Energy. On the book's cover was a picture of a row of windmills, tall steel towers with blades spinning like giant fans. From this book, William learned that wind, something of which Malawi had plenty, could produce electricity. William was delighted. Only 2% of the houses in Malawi have electricity. If William could build a windmill, his family could have lights in their home. And a windmill could be used to pump water to irrigate the family's maize fields. If another drought came, the windmill could provide the water for life. William could picture in his mind the windmill he wanted to build. But collecting the parts and tools he needed would take months. In a junkyard across from the high school, William dug through piles of twisted metal, rusted cars, and worn-out tractors, searching for anything that might help him construct his machine. He took a ring of ball bearings from an old peanut grinder and the cooling fan from a tractor engine. Cracking open a shock absorber, he removed the steel piston inside. He made four-foot-long blades from plastic pipe, which he melted over a fire, flattened out, and stiffened with bamboo poles. Earning some money loading logs into a truck, he paid a welder to attach the piston to the pedal sprocket of an old bicycle frame. This would be the axle of the windmill. When the wind blew, the rotating blades would turn the bicycle wheel, like someone pedaling, and spin a small dynamo. Although he had no money for a dynamo, a friend came to the rescue and bought one from a man in the road right off his bike. 
When he had collected all the parts, William took them out of the corner of his bedroom, laid them outside in the shade of an acacia tree, and began putting them together. Since he did not have a drill to make bolt holes, he shoved a nail through a maize cob, heated it in the fire, then pushed its point through the plastic blades. He bolted the blades to the tractor fan, using washers he'd made from bottle caps. Next, he pushed the fan onto the piston welded to the bicycle frame. With the help of his two best friends, William built a 16-foot tall tower from trunks of blue gum trees and hoisted the 90-pound windmill to the top. Shoppers, farmers, and traders could see William's tower from the local market. They came in a long line to find out what the boy was up to. William knew this was his moment, his moment to show everyone he wasn't crazy, to find out if his experiment would work. He connected two wires from the dynamo to a light socket he'd made from a reed and that held a small bulb. As the wind whipped around him, he removed the bent spoke he'd jammed into the wheel to lock it. Then he held his breath. The blades began to turn, slowly at first, then faster and faster. The light bulb flickered then flashed to life. The crowd cheered from below. A month later, William found enough wire to reach from the windmill into his house. His family crowded around to marvel as the small bulb lit up in William's room. Reading Explaining Physics by its light, he stayed up long after others had gone to bed. In 2006, a school inspector saw the windmill and informed his head office. William's machine now powered four lights and two radios in his house. He'd added a storage battery with homemade switches and a circuit breaker. He also recharged village cell phones. Soon, William was being interviewed on the radio and photographed for the newspapers. The story of the boy with only an 8th grade education who'd built Electric Wind spread across the internet. In 2007, the 19-year-old who had not attended school for five years was flown to Tanzania to speak at the prestigious TED conference, featuring innovators from around the world in technology, education, and design. Nervously struggling with his English, William received a rousing ovation from the Auditorium of Inventors and Scientists when he modestly described what he had done. William attended Dartmouth College in the United States, where he studied environmental science and engineering. He graduated in 2014. William is dedicated to bringing wind and solar-powered electricity and water pumps to impoverished villages in rural Africa.